Welcome back. This is video number two for microbiology in spring 2017. And this one is talking about stages of infections. This may seem like the same topic that I just previously talked about. Those were the steps to establish an infection. This one, this uh, particular mini lecture is about once an infection has taken hold, how does that infection then proceed for the person? So this is assuming that we have gone through portal of entry, we have gone through attachment, we have gone through um, invasion, and we have gone through multiplying and starting to use those virulence factors. We've come to that point, and from this point, the person um, who is being infected is going to show signs and symptoms of infection. The next thing that I want to introduce um, right now is what is the difference between a sign and a symptom. So we tend to talk about this, um, these two terms like they're the same things, but they're not. A sign is some type of outcome from disease or pathology within the human body that is measurable and you can write it on a chart. Or let's say it's measurable, you can write a lot of stuff on a chart, it's measurable um, by a health professional. Health professional. So an example of that is you can take someone's temperature and determine whether they have a fever because you get a number on the, the thermometer readout. That is a sign. You can take someone's blood pressure and write down the number on the chart. That's a sign. Um, you can take someone's pulse. You can count how many white blood cells they have. These are things that I can look at you and I can measure something on you just from my own perspective and it is objective. It's objective and it's measurable by another person. Um, you can also think of it as the person cannot be lying about that because someone else measured it. Okay. Um, symptoms are subjective. They are subjective um, feelings of the individual that has the problem. So an example of this is if you come up to me and you say, Dr. Ong, um, I feel really nauseated. How do I know if you're lying? <laughs> you might be lying. If you are pale and I can see it, that's a sign. If you suddenly puke right in front of me, I can see it, and that's a sign. But if you just say that you're nauseated, or if you say that something hurts, like you have a lot of pain, that's a subjective thing to you. That's a symptom that you report. So um, it's feelings of the individual that they report. And you can put those things on a chart, but you're depending on the patient to tell you. Um, so pain, you can ask them, is it a 10, is it a 6 on a 10-point scale? How bad does it hurt? Um, dizziness, sometimes that's subjective. People say that they're dizzy, you can't tell. Um, if they stand up and fall over, it, you can see that happen, that's a sign. So signs, symptoms. Um, this next chart of measuring the stages of infections, once they're going, it depends on the intensity of signs and symptoms, so we need to define those first. This next slide is a graph, and this particular graph is something that you will need to study and memorize the names of the stages and generally what is going on during that time. So this is stages of infections once they're established, and we're looking at time on the y-axis, which or this is the x-axis, sorry, time on the x-axis, as we so often do, and on this axis, intensity of symptoms and signs. 
both. So this is like measuring how bad do you feel right now, both from symptoms and signs. And we are starting this graph from the time that we first come in contact with the microbe. We first come in contact with the microbe. We would not make such a graph if after contact with the microbe, if no signs and symptoms happened. So if we're talking about colonizers only, or we're talking about microbes that I got on my hand from the marker, I went and washed my hand, they got flushed down the drain, we would not make one of these anyway. This is for when the microbe is causing signs, symptoms, damage to the host. When we have an already established infection that is causing a problem. That's what this graph is for. There are four different stages to this graph and some of them you might have heard of and all of them you felt. So what I'm going to do now is talk about for each of these what's going on, how does it feel, how do you know when it starts and stops. The incubation period is the time between you come in contact with the microbe until what? until you start to feel bad at all. There are hardly any diseases where you come in contact with the microbe and you suddenly feel bad. If you have that, you're in, you're in contact with some kind of a toxin or a poison. It's not a life form that is immediately causing you to feel bad. So the stuff that happens from the time it contacts you to the time when you start to feel anything, that's the incubation stage. And it's very important on this particular graph to note that um, the length of all of the stages is microbe specific. There is not like an incubation period for infections. It depends on the microbe. And we'll talk about this some in class tomorrow. Um, but the time you come in contact with it to the time you feel anything, that's what the incubation period is, um, and its length can be different for different pathogens. The second time frame is called the prodromal stage, uh, and that's a weird word. Stage two, prodromal stage, and the prodromal stage, I most like to define it as when you feel kind of under the weather, or you're starting to feel bad, but it's just kind of, you can still deal with it. So you feel symptoms, but they're not really, really interfering with your body or your day-to-day -day life yet. So we tend to describe this as, I'm under the weather, I think I'm coming down with something. And again, the length of this will be different for different pathogens. Um, if, you've had, if you've had a day where like, you got up in the morning and 10 o'clock you feel fine, and um, noon, you feel completely awful, you have a really short prodromal stage. The other thing you should know about prodromal stage is that this stage um, is often actually the best time to seek treatment. Um, if more people <laughs> would act like a hypochondriac and seek medical treatment when they first start feeling really sick, it would save a lot of money and healthcare time overall. Most people don't. I don't. I usually take the approach of, well, I'll see, I'll wait and see how I feel tomorrow. Um, you might go back down to feeling not bad, or you might go on into stage three, which is period of invasion. Period of invasion starts when symptoms dramatically worsen, or symptoms and signs, let's say, accelerate. So if we're looking at the slope of this graph, we have prodromal, it's kind of going along, and then when you have a steep shift in how bad you feel, you suddenly you're feeling really bad, that's a period of invasion. Period of invasion. This does not necessarily line up with when the pathogen invaded your tissues. That's an unfortunate naming quirk. Um, but the period of invasion is when symptoms really are accelerating, and when they reach their peak, so this is peak sign symptom that's called the height of infection. Height of infection is not a stage, it's just the peak of when your symptoms get the worst. That's height of infection. It occurs during stage three, which is called the period 
of invasion. This is when most people seek medical treatment because they just feel so bad they can't stand it anymore. Um, and then, hopefully at some point, um, your symptoms will subside. If your symptoms never subside and you don't have a downslope in symptoms, um, you're probably going to die, honestly. But if you start to get better and you're on your way to recovery and your symptoms start declining, that's convalescent period. So convalescent is a word that means um, healing or getting better. That's convalescent period. Please note that this is not a curve of infectivity. This is not a curve of how infectious you are. It's a curve of measuring how bad do you feel as time goes by. There are some diseases that are infectious um, during all stages. There are some diseases that are only infectious during stage three. There are some that you can pass on to people even though you're getting, you're feeling better and you're in the convalescent period. So um, that's important to know as well. You can be infectious in any stage. Daycares and schools for kids, when they say that kids need to be fever free for 24 hours before they come back to school, they are trying, they are trying to make a general rule that 24 hours um, after the kid, kids feel some better that they're not going to be infectious. That is not literally true um, because every, every infection is different, but that's a rule of thumb. And so they're banking on once your symptoms start subsiding, you wait 24 hours, you're not going to be infectious. It's, it's a pretty good rule, um, but not every infection works like that.